Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. I've been posting a lot of images lately to Flickr and Instagram and Facebook, and I often post the camera settings for that specific image. And in doing so, I often get questions about different settings I'm using and why I'm using them. Lately, I've been shooting a lot of wildlife with the Nikon D500 that I got on loan from B&H Photo. And I've been using very high ISOs quite often, and people have been asking me how I'm dealing with the noise and you know how great the camera is and stuff like that. So I decided to do a video, a one of video, where I'm just gonna show you my workflow and how I process an image that I happened to shoot with a very high ISO. This image is a good example. It was shot with the Nikon D500, and it was a 200 to 500 millimeter Nikon lens and a 1.4x teleconverter. And you could see the camera setting was 1 200th of a second at f8, but I used an ISO of 12,800. And if you zoom in, you could see that there is still a considerable amount of noise. And when I'm done with this image, you'll see that most of the noise is gone and I really didn't lose any detail. And the main reason that is, is because I process it a very specific way that I've kind of stumbled upon that I feel works very well. So I'm gonna share it with you. Now, to begin with, I use a couple plugins. In the description below this video, I'll have links to those plugins with discount codes if you're interested in getting those plugins. The first plugin I use is Topaz Denoise. Now, I've done at least two videos that I recall using Topaz Denoise. So you could check those videos for more specific <clears throat> ways I use Topaz Denoise. I'm going to do it very specifically for this image, and you'll see how I work with something like this. Now, what I do is I do very minimal processing in Lightroom to begin with. I found that if I process like the basic panel, maybe tone curve and stuff like that, then send it to Topaz Denoise, Topaz Denoise isn't as efficient at removing the noise than if I do it right away. So what I do is if the image needs white balance adjustments, I'll do that first. This image, the white balance is perfect, so I don't need to do any white balance adjustments. I do lens corrections, so I'll enable profile corrections. Then I go to the detail panel, and Lightroom has a default amount of sharpening at 25. I actually will bring that down to zero. I want to send it over to Denoise with no sharpening added to it at all because the sharpening tends to enhance the noise and when the noise is enhanced it's harder to get rid of. So that's all I'll do. Now I do lose some advantages of processing a raw file because when I send it over to Denoise it's going to create a TIFF file. Now the TIFF file will have the white balance baked in already so that's why I'll take care of white balance first before I send it over to Denoise. Also the dynamic range just isn't quite as great and things like that but usually my images are processed or at, um, captured properly so that they're exposed um, fine. I don't have to worry about doing extreme shifts in exposure in post-processing to take care of it. So I'm ready actually to send this over to Denoise. One other thing I want to add, I'm going to crop this image a little bit, but I don't crop it yet. I send the entire full-sized image to Denoise. I found it just works better that way. When you crop it, you're kind of almost um, making the noise larger, if for lack of a better way to put it. And I think Denoise works better when it has the full image. So I'm ready to send this to Denoise. I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to go edit in, edit in Topaz Denoise 6. I have the uh, setting set to Pro Photo RGB color space, 16 bits per component, a resolution of 360. And then I click edit. Now Lightroom will create a TIFF file 
and it's going to send it over to Denoise. Once we're in Denoise, um, we're using Denoise 6, which has some great presets for specific types of cameras. Unfortunately, they don't have a preset for the Nikon D500 yet. So what I do is I'll go to the Denoise 5 presets, and that's what I use. I go over to the navigator, and I look at a part of the image that I'm very um, particular about. Let's say this bird's face up here. And one thing I should warn you about if you're not real familiar with the noise, the window you look at is kind of low resolution, and everything in this window looks worse than it actually is. So the noise is actually appears worse in this view than it actually is. So don't you know worry about it too much. What I'll do now is, since I'm using the Denoise 5 presets, I'll jump around between RAW and JPEG. It doesn't really matter. Usually the RAW seems to work a little better for me. Um, and I'll just click on Light, let's say. And I want to see how it removes the noise. It barely did anything. Then I'll go to Moderate. So I just keep increasing it until I feel satisfied that it's really smoothing out the noise properly. Now, Stronger did a pretty good job there. There still is a little noise. So we'll go to Strongest. And that did a little better. So Strongest looks like it. But what I'll do is I will go over here to Detail Recovery. And this part that has Add Grain, I always bring that down to zero. Then I'll bring up Reduce Blur a little bit. And what you want to be careful is you don't want to go too crazy with Recover Detail or Reduce Blur. Reduce Blur will add artifacts if you go too high, and Recover Detail will tend to bring some of the noise back. So you want to be careful. Now I could see that there's still a little bit of noise in here. So sometimes I will bring Recover Detail down a little bit. Now there is a method to my madness here. It may look like that I'm really obliterating detail. And to an extent, I am softening the image quite a bit by getting rid of the noise. But I use another plugin by On1 later, On1FX, which really helps recover the detail. So that's why I'm not too concerned about it here. So I think this is good. Usually I'll just look around at the other parts of the image. There is still some kind of noise in here of this bird, but that can't be avoided. And we're going to click OK. Now this is going to take a while to process, so um, I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back when we're ready in Lightroom. Okay, we're back in Lightroom. We have our image where I reduced noise in Topaz Denoise. And this is it here, and you can see it's a lot smoother. And what we'll do is we'll compare the two. And let's get rid of that, make a little more room. Let's even get rid of this. Make a little more room and then we could zoom in and you can see this is the image where I reduced the noise and this is the image with the noise and you can see we did soften a lot of the detail in the bird's feathers but we did get rid of a lot of the noise so I, in my opinion it just looks a lot better with uh, the reduced noise so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this image of the uh, birds with the reduced noise and we're going to process this all the way through. Now what I'll do from this point is if there's any cropping I intend to do, I do it now. So on this image here, I do want to crop it a little. I just didn't square the birds up quite right. What I do want to do is lock it up there. Just something like that I think is a little little better so I like that now I'll do my normal Lightroom processing and usually I bring highlights down until I see some detail in the highlight parts of the image I open shadows up quite a bit because I'm going to add quite a bit of contrast and that will make the shadows considerably darker those of you that watch my my uh, Lightroom videos know the way I process an image is pretty specific. And I use the tone curve for contrast as opposed to the actual contrast slider. And 
we're getting there if you could bear with me and in detail I usually don't do anything here because I use on one um, software for that I already did lens corrections to the raw file so I don't have to do them here and um, that's pretty much it uh, I think that's process fine so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna send this image over into on one effects so I'm going to go down to on one effects. Now I have to send a copy with Lightroom adjustments because I just cropped it and I did some adjustments in Lightroom. So we're going to do that. And now it's going to create another file, a PSD file in this example, and it's going to send it over to uh, on one effects and I'm going to do a normal photo just to make it a little smaller if you do a smart photo they tend to be a larger uh, so and to give us a little more room I'm going to get rid of that so I tend to do this same thing all the time I add dynamic contrast uh, to the image you could see that that added a lot more kind of clarity to this shot then what I'll do is I'll take a look at I don't always will I won't always keep this there, but I will do uh, some sharpening because sometimes this makes it overdone. And in this case, it is really overdone. So I'll bring this slider down and see if it helps. Or I'll try computer uh, preset because that tends to be not as strong. So I kind of like that. I think that's pretty good still maybe a little strong I'm gonna bring it down a little more next I'll sometimes I'll take a look at tone enhancer and see what it does to the image automatically and then sometimes I'll take it down and I want to usually sometimes I'll play with the highlights a little bit here just trying to make it a little more pleasing to my eye, not necessarily a specific adjustment that I do all the time, very specifically to each image. It's just something that I will do to make it look, to me, look good. Uh, next, I'll do a vignette. And I like the soft vignette. The preset is called Big Softy, so I like that one. Now at this point, I'll usually walk away from my computer a little bit and kind of relax my eyes and then come back and look at it. Because particularly the sharpening and the dynamic contrast sometimes just look too heavy on the image. And when my eyes are tired or just from looking at it, I don't readily see it. Now. I don't, I'm not going to do that here just to save time, but I, I kind of think it's a little bit over sharpened. So I'm just going to delete this sharpening um, uh, filter that I added and just leave it like that. So I consider this done. So I'm going to click apply. Now this will apply all the effects, the three effects I did to the image, and it will open back up in Lightroom. And now we're going to have three images at the bottom. We have the original image that has, you know, right out of camera with all the noise. The only adjustments done to the original image in this instance were lens corrections. If white balance needed to adjust, uh, be adjusted, I would have done that to this image at this stage right now. Then we sent it over to Topaz Denoise. And in Denoise, I got rid of the noise best I thought it could be uh, you know uh, eliminated and then when it came back into Lightroom I processed the image in the basic panel and the tone curve if I was going to do any HSL adjustments to it I would have done those also I would have done split toning I don't do any detail adjustments at all at this point lens corrections were already already done to the um, raw file if I were to do any transform adjustments, I would have done those also, but I didn't want need them in this image.
And if I was going to do any camera calibration, I would have probably done that in the raw file. But I rarely ever do any camera calibration at all. And what I, that means is right now it's embedded. But in the raw file, in camera calibration, we would have had some very specific uh, adjustments or settings we could have used. So I would have done those in the raw file. After I was done in Denoise, came back in Lightroom and did these adjustments, then I sent it over to on one effects and in on one effects I added dynamic contrast and I took a look at sharpening and I took a look at uh, tone adjustments and I ended up adding a vignette to it and in this case I'm done and I think it came out pretty good you could see there's still a lot of detail this was the main bird I was focusing on uh, you know, at 550 millimeters, F8, you still don't have a great amount of depth of field. So uh, this bird tended to be my sacrifice. I, I didn't uh, have that bird as well focused as this bird. And you can still see we have some really nice detail in this uh, female's hair, you know, the orange hair at the top. Um, but still, the bird in the foreground, the male, um, the plumage is very bright, uh, well focused. Uh, so I consider again this image totally done. Um, hope that made sense. That's how I work with my files when I have very high ISO and a considerable amount of noise. Uh, we could take a look at both of these and compare them. This is the original image of course and here is our processed image and you could see it cleaned up uh, very well and we still have a lot of nice detail. So that's it for this video. I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. Remember there'll be links and discount codes below for On One Software and for Topaz. Uh, thank you again. I really do appreciate it. Take care.